Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and today we've got a lot to talk about around the Australian weather scene once again. We've got some very heavy rainfall on the cards for northeastern New South Wales, southeastern Queensland and a potential wet week for a lot of Queensland actually as per the GFS forecast model and we've also got a powerful cold front and a lot of winter weather currently blowing across the central part of the nation, uh, powered by a strong low pressure system which you can see swirling offshore from Geraldton at this time just north of Perth and that's bringing some bitterly cold conditions to the southwest corner of Western Australia. That All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast video. So if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. Starting things off, of course, with the New South Wales and Queensland rainfall situation, considering it is certainly the most pressing concern, it is still about a week away. However, I do feel like we'd need to be talking about this now. The Bureau of Meteorology hasn't, of course, issued any warnings out for this system, and you don't expect them to until about 24 hours in advance. But just a heads up, there is a lot of rainfall now on the cards for early next week. Uh, from about Sunday onwards, we're going to be seeing this trough develop across a lot of central Australia, stretching between Alice Springs and Tennant Creek in the Northern Territory, through north, uh, southern parts of Queensland, and then into northern parts of New South Wales as well. And that's going to equate to some very heavy rainfall for locations. And this low-pressure trough here is going to be associated with the low pressure front that I'm going to be talking about later on in this video, but it separates away into this trough and creates this big area of low pressure over the top of Queensland, or a line of low pressure, should I say, and that's going to be creating this heavy rainfall in that unstable environment. That's going to separate itself from the light to moderate showers that's going to be dominating the weather scene in the Northern Territory and parts of Queensland and even into Western Australia, and by around Monday afternoon, the heavy rainfall is going to be well and truly set up offshore from the New South Wales and Queensland coastlines and this is where we're going to start to see these winds here bring the strong uh, winds and the heavy rainfall ashore here and you can see here we've got this little trough already starting to develop just offshore from the coastline so many troughs left right and center associated with all this low pressure area and it's about Tuesday morning into early Tuesday afternoon where this low pressure system starts to deepen itself off here you can already see on the wind forecast it has some damaging wind gusts up towards 70 or 80 kilometers an hour in places but the rainfall is certainly going to be the main threat we're looking at pockets here with rainfall up to 40 or 50 millimetres over the three hour period. And for locations between Newcastle up to Torrey, Coffs Harbour, Grafton, Lismore, into the Gold Coast and the Sunshine Coast, Brisbane included, we're going to be seeing consistent moderate to heavy falls over the course of Tuesday and then into Wednesday uh, morning, hopefully easing off by about Wednesday afternoon and then, yeah, by Thursday morning, really starting to clear off here. But a full days, uh, uh, a full two days of rain on Tuesday and then into Wednesday for this part of northeastern New South Wales and some parts of southeastern Queensland. We could be seeing some very heavy falls accumulate through here. And I mean, just looking at this setup here, the total um, rainfall accumulation over the next five days, I believe no, it's not quite in the five day forecast period, but over the next five days, the total accumulated precipitation is around 180 to 190. It's slightly less than yesterday's 220 millimetres. That's on the forecast. But I mean, just looking at the topography in this part of northeastern New South Wales around Grafton and Coffs Harbour, we could be looking at places picking up huge... Um, um, amounts of rainfall, far more than what is actually on the forecast here. I mean, some of the mountains and mountain valleys out here, once you get rainfall trapped and streaming into those, you're talking about accumulations that can blow up to three or 400 millimetres. Now, I'm not saying that that's going to be happening, but the chance of that happening is certainly there, and that's going to be um, increasing that flood risk. So for areas north of Torrey, up towards the Gold Coast, wherever this sort of blue rainfall map is along the coastline, you can also see some purples in here, which is 180 millimetres or more. Wherever this blue is, if you do live slightly inland from that, the flooding risk is certainly going to be there. You can see this uh, little valley here south of Grafton Coffs Harbour. I'm not 100% sure of its name, uh, but you've got Dorigo and Urunga inside it. This little mountain valley, that's really got me concerned because this historically receives an awful lot of rainfall in these weather events. And we're going to be talking about another one of these weather events where they could be getting an awful lot of rainfall over two days. If we were to take a look at soil moisture values as well, they are certainly quite high in this part of northeastern New South Wales. They are above average in pockets here. And just looking at these soil moisture values here, any further rainfall on top of this uh, ground up here, it's just going to cause runoff. Uh, it will blow those rivers up towards the minor or the moderate flooding alert. So certainly the chance of some flash flooding and riverine flooding in this part of northeastern New South Wales, in particular from Tuesday afternoon right through Wednesday and then into Thursday morning. By Thursday evening, the river levels should be dropping at that point. But I do certainly reckon the Bureau of Meteorology 
should raise a couple of minor to moderate flooding alerts for this part of northeastern New South Wales. Looks like southeastern Queensland is going to get off scot free here, but around Byron Bay and that sort of area, or Cape Byron up towards the Gold Coast, including Cooma, which historically can get a lot of rainfall as well, we're still going to be talking about up to 100 millimetres of rainfall. So, certainly quite a lot is expected there. Um, for the rest of the New South Wales coastline, it's not looking awfully wet. The rainfall doesn't make it as far south as Sydney and that sort of area. So it's just this northeastern part of New South Wales powered by that low pressure system, which is going to be strong at times, especially between Tuesday evening and through to about Wednesday evening when it should start to ease off. And that will be powering those heavy showers ashore. Any questions or comments regarding this event, please do leave them in the comment section down below. I look forward to getting back to all of them today. We're also going to be talking about a very um, interesting weather pattern that's going to be happening across central. Queensland into the southern parts of Queensland. Um, later on in the forecast period, I believe we've got this low pressure area that's going to be developing um, after this sort of trough here. You can see this already big bump in the weather um, map here, the synoptic chart here. We're going to be talking about some very heavy rainfall expected to develop from a low pressure system in the central parts of Australia. Now, normally I'd look at a weather event like this and say, that's rubbish. It's not going to be happening. And if you were to take a look at rainfall accumulation across this part of central South Australia into central Queensland and the northwestern pocket of New South Wales. We're talking about accumulations up to 110 millimetres. That's an awful lot of rainfall and the majority of that falling Saturday and Sunday uh, next week as we get in towards July or the middle parts of July at that point. But it's reciprocated amongst the forecast models and that's what I can't wrap my head around. The GFS here going incredibly bullish for 220 millimetres of rainfall in what is the driest part of Australia. I mean, this is three or four years worth of rainfall for this part of Queensland. It's a ridiculous forecast to be looking at. The Access G3 hasn't got it on the cards yet, but I imagine once it sees the Eastern Blue from the GFS uh, calling for the same weather event, it's going to be saying pretty much the exact same thing on the forecast. So I just don't know what to believe here because historically I would laugh at a weather setup like this and say it's rubbish, it's not going to be happening. But the Eastern Blue from the GFS are in great congruency with it about 10 days out. So this is something that we should keep an eye on. It wasn't on the forecast yesterday because it was just too far out. And now that it has made it on the forecast, it's really got my head in a bit of a twist here. I'm not 100% sure of what to make of it. Three years worth of rainfall for parts of um, South Australia and central Queensland. It really doesn't make any sense, especially this time of the year as we get in towards July. So this is a very weird weather event here powered by a low pressure system. Um, let me tell you, I don't think there is enough moisture in the atmosphere for a weather event like this, for, for a rainfall event, but certainly the chance of 20 or 30 millimetres falling across parts of the Northern Territory, the pastoral districts of South Australia and into Queensland as well, between Mount Isa down towards Birdsville and then inland to the um, extreme, um, what's that, the Western agricultural communities around Longreach and Roma. There is certainly the chance of 25, 30, maybe even 50 millimetres falling next weekend on Saturday and Sunday, the 6th and 7th of July, but I don't think we're going to be staring at any more than 80 millimetres, certainly not 220 millimetres is what the GFS has predicted. In short, going to keep a very close eye on this weather event, but I don't think it's going to be happening as per this forecast. That is something very, very strange indeed. Um, so yeah, it's time to flick it back to the winter weather scene. We have a lot to be talking about here as well. Western Australia will start things off first before moving across to South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania, which have a big cold front on the way and potentially minus 10 degrees Celsius conditions to start things off with July. Don't, really, don't want to be missing that, all of that, plus more in the next three or four minutes. We're going to be talking about this weather event first that's impacted Western Australia. Currently, we have a low pressure system making its, I guess, landfall over the top of Geraldton at this time, and it does look like a um, really beat up tropical cyclone at this time, and that's what they are. It's just a rotating low pressure system with some pretty poor clouds um, wrapping around it, and it's creating some bitterly cold conditions around Perth. A very cold wind currently wrapping its way into my uh, window right now, but it, do, it certainly does look look like a uh, pretty mean front that has crossed the coast here. Certainly some heavy showers have been reported. Wedge Island currently sitting on about 60 millimetres of rainfall in the past 24 hours, so quite a lot of rainfall there. And some more rainfall is set to continue for parts of the inland uh, gas coin. And even into the Pilbara and the south interior, we're going to be looking at some rainfall throughout the course of today as well. Heavy showers also expected to dot the south coastal regions between Albany and Esperance. A couple of storms as well expected inland in parts of the eastern wheat belt and into the goldfields as well, um, and maybe even into the southern parts of the Merchant 
Hutchison and the Gascoigne. We could be seeing a few storms there later today and into early tomorrow morning. But all of this winter weather will be wrapping itself up by early Saturday morning. It looks like a clear weekend on the forecasts of Perth and parts of the south coastal regions. Just a couple of showers here and there. And this big line of very light to uh, somewhat moderate rainfall that's going to be extending across uh, the interior parts of Western Australia and then into the Northern Territory and into South Australia. That's going to be what's driving that rainfall event for the northeastern parts of New South Wales and southeast Queensland. The weather does all tie itself nicely into each other and that would be the rainfall done basically for Western Australia for at least the foreseeable future. I do believe there is a bit of cold front coming through uh, by around Tuesday afternoon or so. Yeah, it looks like early Tuesday morning a bit of a cold front comes through. They have cute showers here and there, but it's not going to be sticking around. And it looks like we're going to be moving into a bit of a drier phase for parts of Western Australia after a very wet start uh, to, well, very wet end to June and uh, what could be a pretty wet start to July. Just taking a look at the forecast here, got another big cold front coming through in around eight to 10 days time next Saturday and Sunday, the 7th of July. July there. Now, it's a long way out in the forecast, so we don't 100% know if it's going to be happening, but this time of the year, you can be expecting big cold fronts like this, and it's in sync with what we've been seeing across Western Australia as well. We get these huge tailing bands of um, just moisture and just non-stop rainfall across the West Australian coastline, and it's normally the communities north of Perth, including Geraldton, Kalbarri, Northampton, and then inland in the northern parts of the Wheat Belt and into the Murchison and the Gascoigne that get blasted with uh, very heavy rainfall. I mean, there's places in the Mur in the gas coin that are sitting at four or five hundred percent of their annual rainfall already because of the weather systems that have been coming through. Of course, they haven't had that wet season yet, but still, some very heavy rainfall has been moving through parts of Western Australia. It's been causing all sorts of problems for the agricultural districts as well. I mean, flooding is certainly the big one at this time. But in terms of 10 day rainfall from this weather system, we could be seeing about 50 millimetres of the Perth metro area next Sunday. That is the 7th of July, so it's still a long way out, nine days, uh, and it's not worth worrying about right now but it would be some much needed rainfall at that point for parts of the farming communities just to top up the dams and to keep those rivers flowing so we'll be holding out for hope for that rainfall we do certainly hope that it does happen um, in terms of being reciprocated amongst the other forecast models, the GFS also calling for a very similar weather event here. And the Access G3, interestingly enough, although it's calling for a complex low pressure system situation, it is still calling for a pretty powerful front to line up. So it looks like next fortnight, the West Australian coastline might be in for a bit of a hammering with some uh, very strong cold fronts or very strong low pressure activity. And I know the last time I said that or tried to make a prediction 14 days out in the future, it ended up being horribly wrong, but so was every other forecast made. This one here does look a little bit more certain. It's got a lot greater model congruency, so that is some good news there. That's certainly enough talk for Western Australia. We're going to shift focus now to South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania and also New South Wales. Now, we do have that low pressure system, that cold front that's been impacting Western Australia for the past 48 hours. That's going to be moving through by around early Saturday morning. It's only going to be bringing light to moderate rainfall across parts of South Australia and then into Victoria and Tasmania. I'm not expecting any heavy accumulations here. Certainly some snow is expected on the New South Wales and Victoria highlands. There will be places that pick up up to 20 centimetres of snow just from this moderate to um, somewhat heavy um, accumulations that will be expected to concentrate themselves around this part of New South Wales where those mountains are. But the majority of New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia and Tasmania will only be receiving light to moderate rainfall. And I'm not expecting places to be picking up more than 10 or 15 millimetres and the absolute wettest of locations shouldn't pick up more than 30 millimetres. So it is a very weak cold front coming through, but it's going to be dragging in this huge high pressure system behind it. And that's going to be bringing those bitterly cold southerly winds um, uh, up past Tasmania and then into Victoria and New South Wales and that means Monday morning is going to be icy and I can't stress this enough it is going to be freezing for parts of New South Wales and into Tasmania as well not as cold as what the forecast did say yesterday but we're still looking at conditions minus six or minus seven degrees Celsius uh, in parts of Tasmania also around minus four to minus five degrees Celsius for parts of the highlands there a huge swathe of below zero degree temperatures for Tasmania and a lot of Victoria also threatening to go very low low single digits or below zero uh, on Monday morning as well. And things are really not heating up that much as well. The highlands barely getting above single digits for the day. There'll be places that don't make it above freezing actually for uh, Monday as a whole. 
And then another really cold night Tuesday as well. We're looking at temperatures into the uh, about the mid um, negatives as well, where we're talking about minus four, minus five degrees Celsius again for Tasmania, minus four, minus five degrees Celsius. So a very cold start to July by the looks of things. This high pressure system dominates the weather scene. Um, once it moves over Tasmania and into the Bass Strait as well, those very cold winds from the south are going to turn into some relatively cold winds from the west. They're not going to be as cold, and those very cold conditions will start to ease off for Tasmania for Victoria and South Australia. They will continue for just a little bit longer and it looks like sub-zero degree temperatures expected to extend into the Northern Territory as well Wednesday morning. So this cold front and more than rainfall, it's just going to be bringing these icy cold conditions to a lot of Southern Australia, including South Australia, Western Australia, the Northern Territory even as well. And it's very rare that you see a big swathe of uh, close to zero or below zero temperatures for the Northern Territory. But I mean, into South Australia, looking at minus two degrees Celsius on Wednesday morning. So it is going to be a freezing morning there. Just a heads up, a lot of frost is expected. Brown rot also possible. So for, so for the farmers in this area, especially into Victoria, New South Wales and South Australia, Tasmania as well, make sure you are preparing for some very cold mornings because they will be likely the coldest or some of the coldest mornings of the year all powered by this high pressure system, which won't get itself away from Tasmania until about Wednesday or Thursday. Those cold conditions though on the highlands will continue indefinitely. It is of course that time of the year. That basically does it for the weather forecast today. It looks like it's a very complex one. It's pretty simple once you break it down into great detail. And if I've missed anything, then please do leave it in the comment section down below. I'd be more than happy to answer your question. Uh, all powered by this low pressure system, but the looks of things, that's kind of causing all of the weather problems. Uh, however, that big weather system that's expected to, to develop across central Australia that dumps 200 millimetres as per the GFS forecast, I think that is a little bit of bogus, but we will wait and see on how that one pans out. There will be more daily weather forecasts forecasts coming uh, from now on on this weather situation. But that is all for me today. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. I could not run this show without them and their support is greatly appreciated. Leave me a weather report for your location in the comment section down below. I look forward to reading it and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.